Local researchers have developed a device that can detect super high energy cosmic rays. Astronomers in the US and Europe are saying they've detected gravitational waves. As the universe is endless, so is the curiosity of man. With several space exploration programs, aided with technological advancements like telescopes, satellites, and space probes, we're finally capable of studying very distant galaxies, planets, and celestial phenomena. Our knowledge of how the cosmos works continues to widen, letting us predict what is possible. Yet, in an unexpected twist, scientists have spotted an extremely powerful cosmic ray that just hit Earth and they do not know where it came from. Is this some random cosmic activity and what can be done about it? Stay tuned as we delve into the details. The Discovery, Mysterious Cosmic Ray. Scientists using a big telescope in Utah's West Desert found a super high energy space particle falling to Earth. They named it Amaterasu, after a sun goddess in Japanese stories. This particle has more energy than almost any other cosmic ray ever found. Usually, powerful space events, much bigger than a star exploding, create these super energetic particles. But Amaterasu seems to have come from a quiet area next to our Milky Way galaxy, the local void. Professor John Matthews from the University of Utah, who helped with the discovery, says it's a mystery because they can't find anything super energetic enough in its path to make it. Amaterasu has more energy than 240 exa-electron volts, which is way more than what the Large Hadron Collider, the strongest particle accelerator, produces. It's like the energy of a golf ball going at 95 miles per hour. The only cosmic ray with more energy was the Oh My God particle found in 1991. Toshihiro Fuji, a professor in Japan, was surprised when he first found Amaterasu. He thought there might be a mistake because it had more energy than anything seen in the last 30 years. Scientists think a huge black hole in the center of another galaxy could create such high energy particles. Matter breaks down around these massive black holes into tiny parts, and protons, electrons, and nuclei get shot out across space really fast. Cosmic rays, like the one they found, constantly rain down on Earth from these intense space events. Mystery of Amaterasu. Particles with low energy move like a ball in a pinball machine, bouncing around due to electromagnetic fields in space. But super energetic particles like Oh My God or Amaterasu don't follow that pattern. They should go through space without bending because of magnetic fields, making it possible to determine where they come from. When scientists try to trace the path of these particles backwards, it leads to space. The Oh My God particle also didn't seem to have a clear source. Scientists think this might mean there's more bending by magnetic fields than expected, something unknown in the empty space next to our galaxy or they don't fully understand how high-energy particles work. Professor John Bells from the University of Utah says these particles come from different places in the sky. It's not as if there's just one mysterious source. It could be because of issues in how space and time are structured or collisions between cosmic strings. When were these cosmic rays first discovered? Cosmic rays are super energetic tiny particles zooming through space at almost the speed of light. Essentially, they're just atomic nuclei of protons, or clusters of protons and neutrons. While many come from the Sun, some originate from things outside our solar system. When these rays hit the Earth's atmosphere, they break into showers of other particles, some positive and some negative. Victor Hess discovered cosmic rays 1912 by going up in a hydrogen balloon to measure radiation in the atmosphere using an electroscope. He found that the ionization rate was much higher than at sea level, disproving a theory that said this radiation came from Earth's rocks. If you've ever seen a cloud chamber in a science museum, the tracks left by cosmic rays look like wispy white lines, similar to tiny jet contrails. Cosmic rays have different energy levels, with the least energetic being the most common. These are the ones Hess detected and are likely to be seen in a museum's cloud chamber. In 1965, scientists proposed a theoretical limit on how energetic a cosmic ray should be. No more than 50 exa electron volts from more than 300 million light-years away from Earth. 
This is because of the cosmic microwave background radiation, the glow from the Big Bang discovered in 1964. Any cosmic rays traveling farther than that would be destroyed by interactions with the CMB before reaching detectors on Earth. This limit is called the GZK cutoff after the scientists who suggested it. Kenneth Grayson, Georgi Zetsepin, and Vadim Kuzmin. The Oh My God particle, found in Utah in 1991, is the most powerful cosmic ray ever seen, even until 2023. It had a super high energy level of 32 exa electron volts, surprising scientists and making them question their knowledge of where cosmic rays come from and how they move. This special particle hit Earth's atmosphere fast, almost at the speed of light, and seemed to come from the Perseus constellation in the northern sky. It had the energy of a bowling ball dropped from shoulder height, but squeezed into a tiny particle. Even though we don't know exactly what kind of particle it was, most cosmic rays are protons. The Oh My God particle moved almost as fast as light itself, and if a photon traveled alongside it, it would take over 2 15,000 years for the photon to be just one centimeter ahead, as seen from Earth. This is because of special rules about how fast things can move, called special relativity. The particle's energy was 40 million times more than the highest energy protons in any human-made particle accelerator, but when it hit a nitrogen nucleus in Earth's atmosphere, only a small part of its energy interacted with the nucleus, and most of it turned into the movement energy of the particles that came out of the collision. When the Oh My God particle hit a nitrogen nucleus, it produced 29 exa electron volts, much higher than the highest collision energy of the Large Hadron Collider, a big particle accelerator. In simple terms, the collision produced particles with much energy, moving almost as fast as light. The Oh My God particle had energy 1020 times that of visible light photons, like a baseball weighing 142 grams traveling at about 28 meters per second. Its energy was 20 million times higher than the highest photon energy measured from a distant object called the Blazar Markarian 501. Even though this particle had extremely high energy, it was still 40 million times lower than Planck's energy, which is needed to understand very tiny details of the universe. If a proton had the same energy as the Oh My God particle, it would need to be 1.665 pence times closer to the speed of light. From our viewpoint on Earth, it would take about 357 octa years for a photon to pass a proton with Planck energy, which is a long time. Scientists have yet to find another particle like the Oh My God particle since then, but they have seen many similar high-energy events over the years. Source of Cosmic Rays Where do these super-fast cosmic rays come from? Even something as powerful as a supernova can't make them. One idea is that they might come from huge explosions in space, like when a black hole tears apart a star, creating a big jet of super-hot stuff. As particles travel through space, they go through magnetic fields many times, picking up more and more energy. Another possible source is active galactic nuclei, usually found at the center of galaxies and thought to have a supermassive black hole. AGNs shoot out powerful jets of really hot stuff, creating shockwaves. Some scientists suggest gamma ray bursts, or super intense areas where stars form, called starburst galaxies. The tricky part is that the paths of these rays get bent by magnetic fields on their way to Earth, making it hard to figure out where they came from in the sky. In 2017, astronomers thought they found a couple of interesting spots, one in Centaurus A and the other in a galaxy called M82 in the Ursa Major constellation. However, the confidence in the Centaurus A spot has decreased since 2019, because fewer cosmic rays seem to be coming from there. How do we track these cosmic rays? Around the world, a group of observatories is dedicated to spotting and studying elusive particles in space. Scientists are keen to understand where they come from and the extreme processes that create them. One of the key players in this effort is the Telescope Array, located strategically in Utah's West Desert. This is no small setup, 
It includes over 500 detectors arranged in a square grid covering 270 square miles. Its primary goal is to identify cosmic rays, which are super-fast particles. Placed at 1,200 meters, the telescope array allows secondary particles to develop before breaking down. Its location in Utah ensures dry air, crucial for clear detection and dark skies to avoid light pollution. The current configuration, known as ATA-42, has a baseline of 300 meters, and there are plans to expand it to ATA-350 with a baseline of 900 meters. Each antenna has a cooled log periodic feed that works well from 1 to 10 gigahertz. The telescope array can produce up to 32 phased array beams, making it suitable for large surveys. Another significant player in cosmic rays observation is the Pierre Auger Observatory in Argentina. It is the world's largest cosmic ray observatory, covering 3,000 square kilometers. With an extensive array of detectors, the Pierre Auger Observatory aims to unravel the mysteries surrounding UHECRs. The high-resolution flies eye experiment, situated in Utah like the telescope array, used fluorescence detection to analyze air showers generated by cosmic rays interacting with the Earth's atmosphere. Although HiRes is no longer operational, its valuable data set contributed significantly to understanding these high-energy particles. Auger Prime is an upgrade to the Pierre Auger Observatory, focused on improving precision and efficiency in cosmic ray detection. This reflects the ongoing commitment to enhance the capabilities of existing observatories for more accurate observations. In Russia, the Tunka Advanced Instrument for Cosmic Ray Physics and Gamma Astronomy Observatory is a prominent player in cosmic ray research. While its main focus is on gamma ray observations, Taiga actively contributes to studying cosmic rays using detectors like water, Cherenkov, detectors. The Southern Wide Angle Gamma Ray Observatory in Puebla, Mexico, is another facility with dual capabilities. While its primary mission is gamma ray observations, SWGO is expected to contribute significantly to studying cosmic rays using a water Cherenkov detector array. Despite the progress made by these observatories, studying cosmic rays remains challenging. The paths of these particles are influenced by magnetic fields, making it difficult to trace their origins in the sky. Scientists must help understand observations, such as cosmic rays arriving from different directions without a clear explanation. Recent detections, like the Amaterasu particle found by the telescope array in 2021, add to the mystery. Similar to the famous Oh My God particle in 1991, Amaterasu surprised scientists as they couldn't determine its source. Tracking its path led them to a local void space near our Milky Way galaxy. Magnetic fields shouldn't affect these high-energy particles much, so scientists expected to pinpoint their source. However, with the Oh My God particle and Amaterasu, there must be something high energy enough in the traced path to explain their origin. The telescope array is expanding, and they plan to add 500 new detectors to cover 1,100 square miles. This expansion could help scientists detect more of these mysterious high energy events and potentially understand where they come from. The curious aspect is that these events seem to come from different parts of the sky, challenging scientists to find a clear explanation some even suggest unconventional ideas like defects in space-time or colliding cosmic strings because traditional explanations don't fit. It's a real mystery that the telescope array hopes to solve with its continued expansion. What are your thoughts about Amaterasu? What do you think caused it? Let's hear from you in the comment section. Also, like this video and subscribe to this channel for more. See you soon.